Okay, guys. So I just wanted to say I'm going to do something a little bit differently um, because, you know, I do not really recap the show. I talk about what I want to talk about, the highlights of the show, the things that, you know, uh, stood out a little bit during the, re the reunion. But I just give you guys my opinion. But <clears throat> I really want to reserve all of my um, you know, good tea for next week, right? Like part, part three is really the part that I want to talk about extensively. So I was just thinking that I would do something a little bit different this time. So what I've done is I went online and uh, I just decided I wanted to give, uh, your voices, um, you know, like a platform because there's a lot of comments out there. There's like people stating their opinion on different channels, whether it's on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter. And I just wanted to kind of like gather a few of the comments that I thought were interesting and just give you my opinion on uh, those comments. So I'm not going to name the, the name or the person or the account behind it. I'm just going to read the comment. So the first comment I came across was on YouTube. And uh, this person said, Notice how Teresa was pissed at Dolores for not telling her that Margaret called her that the day that her son was threatened by Louis. Well, it really showed how Teresa has a huge thumb on Dolores. I was so impressed with Melissa finally unleashing on Teresa and letting it all out. Also, Danielle was totally set up and Jen even gave it away when she said, well, Andy, would you rather it not come out on the show? You hate it when we keep things secret from the show. Only goes to show that Jen and Theresa really wanted it to come out on the show and manipulated Danielle to say it at the finale. A good manipulator is someone who can convince you that it was all your idea. Also, how ugly does it make Jen and Theresa to call Margaret an old hag? The demographic of women who watch this show are Margaret's age. They will not, this will not go over well. And they will lose some fans for sure in the future. Well, that was a lot. You know, that was a, there's a lot of things in that comment, but that's the reason why uh, I kind of selected it too, because I felt like it covers a lot of the points that I actually want to discuss with you guys. So let's start with the beginning. I did notice that too. Teresa was really upset when Margaret said, my son or my kid was contacted at work. And then I'm sorry, the ladies go into it a little bit. And then um, she said to Dolores, Dolores, wasn't I all shaken up when I called you about this? Like, was it, was it, I, was I, well, I can't even say it. <laughs> she was like, was I not shaken up when I was trying to call you? And, um, Dolores was like, yeah, visibly, like you were like, you know, you were kind of like upset, sad, all of that, you know, like stressed and all of this. And then Teresa, you could like, Teresa doesn't even care. Teresa doesn't even care about that. And that's scary, guys, because Teresa doesn't even care about the fact that Margaret's kid was con contacted in Trenton. She doesn't even say like, Oh my gosh, like this is the first time I hear of something like this. Margaret, are you okay? Is your son okay? Like what happened? Teresa is not even concerned about that. What she's concerned about, she's concerned that Dolores did not call her to tell her about that. That's scary, guys. Like Teresa does not think like, uh, honestly, okay, before I say what I'm going to say, I'm going to say this. Um, I have been, and you guys know this, the people that have been listening to me, um, or to my podcast, I have been the biggest Teresa fan for the past 12 seasons of the Real Housewives of New Jersey. And don't get me wrong, being a fan, even when I, I would talk about Teresa to my friends or people that watch the show, 
I always said to them, oh, I know she's wrong a lot. You know what I mean? But I just love her. I just love her on the show. I just loved her energy attitude. And I knew that she was lying at times too. They all do, right? They all do. They get caught in lies. They're not always right. They're not always wrong. But I really like Teresa, okay? But I have to admit, I do not like her this season. I can't. Teresa has gone dark. Like she took a turn that I really don't like. And um, I think that, you know, her union with Louis has a lot to do with that maybe. But this season, I find that we have caught Teresa in a lot of lies and that Melissa has been accused of a lot of things over the years. And I'm sure a lot of them are true. Um, although I do not have the proof, like, like I said, I think there's something true for everyone. Do I care that much unless it's something very dark or something really, really bad? Like, no, it's just a show for me. Right. But, um, I feel like, you know, this hot mic moment that happened in the car with Louis, when Louis was just like, hey, I'm going to invite everybody except for your sister-in-law and Joe. Um, this is kind of just showing us that Teresa is more concerned about appearing to, 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 to be doing the right thing to the viewers rather than actually doing the right thing. Like Teresa is scheming behind the scenes as well. Um, you know, to do dirty things. But on camera, she's always the person who is, you know, a victim or, you know, she's always the person that people are doing horrible stuff to, right? Meanwhile, she is playing in the mud as well. She just doesn't like to get caught. And that has happened quite a few times this season. And even, you know, in prior seasons with Danielle, the reason why Teresa reacted in the way that she reacted at the shore house after Melissa said, not glee, not gleefully, by the way, she just asked Teresa a question. She said, this is what Danielle said. You know, she said that you told her, you encouraged her to pull on Margaret's hair. Um, the only reason why Teresa reacted in that way is not because she felt bad for Margaret. She felt bad that she got caught. And that was her initial reaction. She said, I hope the producers are not going to use this. That's her only concern. You know, Teresa doesn't even know what's real, what's reality. She's been on television for too long, I think. You know, her world revolves around housewife and the appearance of. Teresa doesn't even know what it's like to be like a normal person anymore, I think. Right. So anyways. I just thought I would say that. But in that moment, Teresa turns over to Dolores and says, how come you didn't call me about that? And Dolores is like, well, Margaret told me that you already knew, right? And then Dolores kind of feels like the fire, like, you know, she feels like the fire under her seat. And then she just goes and says, you know what? I don't want to be involved in this. I don't want to talk about this. Leave me out of it. And you could tell Teresa is keeping a score on Dolores on this one because she's not happy. She's like, okay, do what's good for you then, right? You got to do what she, what's good for you. That's what she says. But you can visibly see that she's not happy. And this is the reason why I'm going to say, and I've said it before, I feel like, you know, there's a pause in Jersey and ideally we would bring them all back, Um I think it would be great. Well, maybe not all, all of them. Some of them can go. But um, the, the, the main key players, right? But here's the thing. Dolores cannot be herself around Teresa on the show, I think. That's the feeling that I get. I feel like Teresa knows way too much. And Teresa has those ways that, you know, if you cross her, then she'll come for you. And I think that Dolores knows that. And that's the reason why she kind of stays in line a little bit. I truly believe that Dolores off the show 
um, is a true blue friend. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm sure she has like great qualities and she would probably tell you and not always agree with you. Um, I think her real personality would shine more outside of the show, but on the show with Teresa, I think that Dolores has to stay in line for whatever reason. You know what I mean? So, and it's kind of disappointing. And I see that a lot of people are starting to get fed up with that as well. So anyways, so Louis called Margaret's son and threatened him. Okay. I want, I wonder what Andy's going to do with that. Like, I, I don't know. I hope, like I said before, I hope the pause is to actually look clearly into Louis, right? And his tuggish ways. So anyways, that's that. Now, the person said, I'm so impressed with Melissa finally unleashing on Teresa and letting it all out. I'm happy about that, too, because we haven't seen that. Uh, Melissa has been on the show since season three. And whatever you like her or not, you know, she always gave us the appearance that she was supporting Teresa on camera. You know what I mean? I'm not talking about behind the scenes. We're watching a show. I'm not watching behind the scenes. On the show, she has supported Teresa on camera. She has defended her. She has sided with her. She has ended relationships because of, you know, of her as well, whether you like her or not. Like, not the same can be said about um, Teresa. You know, you can clearly tell that Joe Gorga and Melissa did not want to cut ties with Kathy, Wakili, and Richie. You could tell. But that was probably like they were probably given an ultimatum by Teresa, right? And Teresa probably told them like, you know, you're my family and you have to side with me. And at the end of the day, you are responsible for your own choices, right? Joe and Melissa made a choice to cut ties with the Wakili's. But I'm sure that if Teresa would have found a way to just, you know, be happy with them and coexist and having them on the show, they would still have a relationship, right? So that's what I'm saying. Eventually, a person like that uh, becomes quite toxic. And I'm not sure that it makes a good show anymore. Actually, I am sure it doesn't make a good show anymore, right? And Andy has, you know, a decision here, like a big decision, like he has something to decide. And... You know, a lot of the Teresa super fans might be like, well, she has to stay because she's the queen. But I don't know. I think we deserve better than that. We deserve a real show at this point. And I'm not sure the real show is happening because of Teresa's ways right right now. So. OK, so I have the other and here it says. Okay, so, and then they go and talk about Jennifer. You know, Jennifer saying, well, wouldn't you rather it come out on the show? It's like, guys, I have a video on YouTube. It came out a couple of weeks ago. It's called R-H-O-N-J. Did Danielle get played? Yes, she did get played. I say that, I say that two weeks ago in my video that Danielle got set up by Jennifer. Because while I was watching the show, I was just like, oh, this woman just got set up. And I think she doesn't even know about this. I had no idea that this was coming out at the reunion. I'm just saying, Danielle got played. And that's dirty. Jennifer, you know, at the beginning when she's talking and she's pretending to be just like, this was done to me last year. This is what it did to me last year. And I'm not like under no circumstances I want to do that to another family. Well, you just did. You just did. And that makes you as dirty as Margaret for doing that to you last year. And it's like, what is your beef with Melissa anyways, Jennifer? Like, Melissa has never done anything to you, right? And it's even Jennifer has admitted out of her own mouth on Teresa's podcast that she thought that when she would join the Real Housewives of New Jersey, that she would make fast friends with Melissa, and that she would probably have a harder time making, you know, building a friendship with Teresa. Well, it's interesting because as soon as she joined the, the show, she hated on Melissa and she made friends with Teresa. And ever since 
that happened. At first, like, Jen gave us really good TV. I did enjoy her. Like, her first season, you know, she was kind of like, she was new and she could be a little bit annoying her first season, but definitely her second season was the like her best, I think. Like she came and she came to play. Her third season on the show was even better. And then that season where where uh, Margaret told the secret, you know, Jen admitted to it and the way she handled the entire thing. Like, you know, I was like, wow, this woman, she's good for the show. Like, I, I I, wish Jennifer would realize that she has a story, a very interesting story outside of just being Teresa's puppet. And she's kind of destroying this um, for herself by just like being Teresa's soldier, you know, for lack of better words. Um Seriously, like Teresa, I'm not even sure if Teresa is as invested in the friendship. I know they go out on Instagram and they do all of that stuff together. But I'm not sure that Teresa has Jen's back like that as much as Jen has her back. But anyways, that's just my opinion. I don't think at this point that Teresa has anyone's back other than just Louis, to tell you the truth. So, and I have to, I have to, um to agree with that person who said a good manipulator is someone who can convince you that it was all your idea. That's true. And if you notice, Teresa is that person because Teresa will say, no, I have nothing to do with it. I can't stop them. Hey, you can't stop people from doing what they want. Teresa will never say, yeah, this is my part in it. And I'm sorry for that. She'll say, no, 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 no. That was you. That was all you. That was all you. We just told you and you ran with it. That's basically Theresa's position on that. Right. So anyways, and, uh, I have to agree. I don't like the whole thing about, uh, you know, old lady energy or you're old, you're old. I've never really liked this. It's like, Jennifer, you're not like a spring chicken. Uh, I'm not quite sure how old you are, but your your husband just turned 50. So I'm assuming you're like getting quite up there. Teresa's 51. Um, it's tacky. It's classless. And it's really not nice. At the end of the day, we're all getting old. We're all getting old. You know, you're having plastic surgery to stay like youthful. Okay. So I don't understand why you need to talk to Margaret and like attack her on her looks. Like, to be honest, like Margaret is not even my favorite character on the show. Like people, you know, she is not my person, but I do believe that Margaret is a beautiful woman too, right? Like, I don't believe that people need to attack her on her looks. And you, you, you're you all in the same age bracket. So just drop it at this point. It makes you look really stupid when you say things like that. Seriously. So, you know. And the whole thing about, like, Andy's big dick energy. Like, I don't want to talk about Andy's dick. I really don't. Like, this is so funny because it's like, you know, if a man, and I have to say, I'm not going to get all political on you guys, but I'm just saying if a man said this and said, oh, I don't know, like, you know, like this is big sugar tits energy. Like, I don't know, like something like that. I'm trying to think about something stupid to say here. But, you know, this would be like a big problem, like a big HR problem. Like, like we would have a moment, like a television moment at this point. But it's okay for a woman to go on a stage and say, you got big dick energy. It's like, shut your mouth. Keep it closed. You don't have to say everything that comes out of your mouth, Jennifer. So to me, I'm just saying, stay out of like this, you know, the stay old, the big dick energy, small dick energy. It's just like, stop it. Let's not talk about private body parts and people's age. 